Welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor, everybody. Steve Mitchell here. I wanted to continue the basic shape studies of trees that I began in the last video. So I decided to go ahead and do a, a step two or a part two. Instead of a Windsor Newton watercolor marker, I've got some actual watercolors this time. Some actual paint out of a tube, I should say. And this is a palette I've set up just for greens. But I thought uh, I needed to show the next step. The next step is to take these broad shapes and study not only the overall volume, but the internal structures. And keeping firmly in mind those broad shapes. I usually start out with a very light color. I'm gonna start out with the, the bullet shape. But now I'm painting kind of loose foliage. Sorry if you've got a bit of a glare here. But get a nice fairly light wash. I'm trying to do some underlying shadows. And this is informed by your observations to where the shadows are. Which way are the leaves going? Are they casting down or are they casting up? Look at your actual tree. If you want to leave some holes in the canopy, by all means do that. Once you have that, that wet um, tree shape down, your, your dark tones should be very heavy in paint and very light in water because the water that's already on the page will take and move your paint. Watercolor has a mind of its own and will paint sometimes for you if you let it. It's just one of the most fun and exciting things to see. Medium practically painted that for me. And what I do is go in, rinse out my brush, and then almost just get it just as dry as I possibly can. And this, while well, this paint is still wet, and on the highlight edges, just pick some of that back up. To accentuate the highlight. And voila, I quickly have a very nice real, realistic little study. Minus the trunk, of course. Grab a little sepia. And let's pop in a trunk and maybe some some ground. And so going back to my video last week, we have this bullet shape that we studied. And now I've just simply painted in um, in a little looser fashion to that same shape because I know that's a, a tree shape that I studied, I observed. And now I'm going in and I'm observing where the light and shadow is. I'm still not concerned about leaves, individual leaves and stippling in on this detail. I'm concerned about how the light hits and where the light and shadow is on the mass, the, the leaf masses. Let's do another one. Maybe a shape like this. Again, I'm getting a nice light wash. Those have very downcast leaves, that particular shape. I'm going to leave maybe a few more gaps in this one. And it's a bit pointed, the overall shape. Now, I'm drying my brush out, picking up very heavy. Pigment, pigment, just to show you, I'm going in with a mix of Prussian blue and turquoise and adding a little bit of this um, green here. It's kind of an olive green, I think it's called azo green. Now I start tipping the bottom of these shapes. Maybe I fill in some of the dark area. Again, your paint here has got to be very concentrated. And the wet areas will just take it and move it right up. Again, I've I've painted to that shape. It's a, a shape that I think is is observed and realistic. Now I'm going in and modeling in some of these internal structures with light and shadow. And sometimes in some places, 
um, it can get very dark because the canopy goes off into the distance too. It's not a cardboard cutout. It comes towards you and it goes away from you. So um, layers of leaves behind some of the lighter color leaves will be there and it'll usually be completely in shadow. Very easy. Again, watercolor, I've let it do some of the work for me. Now I'm going to wash my brush out, dry it really, really well. We'll go up in here, just pick out a few highlights. That'll, that'll slow down the flow. This is all still very wet. That'll slow down the flow. A little sepia. And let's try it. This is maybe a trunk that forks a little further down and it's fairly short at the bottom. Tons of fun. Tons and tons of fun. This was all a pretty simple step from this phase. And you're not just doing a painting, you know, you're informing yourself, you're studying trees, how they look. Some of these things, when you actually paint them, they really stick. That's why I harp on this, um, observing the detail. If you, if you don't have time to go out or don't have the setup to go out and paint, go out and take a few pictures and bring them back. All right, let's try something like this, this fir tree. And this is where... These, these Christmas tree shapes, and, and that's really over-exaggerated, oversimplified, but um, you will see quite a, a big variety, and the color will be a little different. It'll be usually, if it's a spruce or something like that, it's more of a blue-green. And watch the, the leaf structures. They're usually flatter, so I'm going to... Make that that triangular shape. I'm throwing these in. A lot of fir trees have also have very downcast branches. And again, we'll rinse, dry out my brush, and and now I'm going to pick up some very heavy pigment with a very little water and go on the edges of these wet spots. I still have too much. That looks pretty good. Rinsing out my brush again. Drying it out as much as I can on this towel. We'll go back in here and just Touch some of the wet areas. If they're still wet, your brush will pick up some of that pigment. And it will stop the flow of the darker. The drier it is, the more it slows down the flow of paint. Pop in a trunk. Or trees have pretty straight trunks, I observe. Sometimes their branches are usually pretty straight out there if you want to do a bare branch here and there. Or they'll shoot down. But I hope you can see how easy the progression was from these simple shape studies to this. Basically breaking it down from the big shapes to the internal structures. But watercolor just really excels at doing quick, fresh, wet, and wet approaches like this. It's hard really to do that with any other medium. Thanks, guys. I hope that was a help. Uh, take that next step with those simple tree studies and try some of these. Um, you may not get it right off the bat, but keep trying and it's just a ton of fun.
I hope this was a help to you. If it was, I hope you'll like the video. Subscribe if you want to see more of this kind of stuff. And we're going to see you next time.